Today we will compare two options for insulating a flat roof, foam concrete and polystyrene. Which is cheaper, more efficient and more durable? With all the nuances. The topic is very relevant, because flat-roofed buildings are a modern trend, and about 70% of new projects are flat-roofed. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you the main secret of foam concrete and why almost no one knows about it. Let's start with the preparation of the base, because this is where the differences begin. In general, you need to clean the roof surface of dust and dirt, fill in cracks, and install vapor barrier. By the way, if the surface isn't flat, this is not a problem for foam concrete, as it can be poured on any surface, but polystyrene requires a perfectly flat roof, otherwise the boards will lie with gaps, which will lead to heat loss and oscillations of the sheets, like a swing. The next stage is to create a slope for water drainage and roof insulation. Foam concrete allows you to do this in one step. It is poured with a moderately liquid layer of insulation. For example, D200 foam concrete, which weighs 200 kilograms per cubic meter, a very lightweight material, and immediately forms the correct slope. Polystyrene is laid separately, and a light screed is used to slope it. This complicates the work and increases costs. It is also important to carefully glue the joints between the boards to avoid heat loss. The installation of the PPS requires the use of drills, a perforator and foam to press the slabs to the surface. Foam concrete does not have this problem, it is monolithic and has no seams. It is worth noting that 30 cm of PPS and 40 cm of D200 foam concrete are enough for effective insulation. This means that 28% more foam concrete is needed. But it does not need a screed for sloping, glue or foam for joints. Obviously, these additional costs play in favor of foam concrete. When a flat roof is insulated and there is a slope, you need to put a protective layer on the insulation. Both D200 foam concrete and PPS can be easily damaged both during the subsequent installation of the roof and during its operation. It is enough to cover the foam concrete with a layer of more durable foam concrete. The grade of the protective layer depends on the chosen waterproofing, 8 cm D600 is enough for roofing felt, 5 cm D800 for the membrane. But for PPS, a strong reinforced concrete screed of 3 cm or more is required. And since the PPS has elastic deformations, it is necessary to reinforce the screed, which will increase the cost and provide places for ventilation equipment. Foam concrete does not have elastic deformations and perfectly distributes the load over a large area. It's not hard to guess that it's cheaper to install a layer of protective foam concrete than a reinforced concrete screed. The last stage of a flat roof is the installation of waterproofing. There is no big difference here if a protective layer is installed. As you remember, roofing felt, a cheaper option, is suitable for D600 foam concrete and a membrane, more expensive and reliable, is suitable for D800. If the PPS is covered with a layer of reinforced concrete, any waterproofing will hold reliably. Let's consider a very important point, fire safety. Foam concrete is absolutely non-combustible and can withstand high temperatures. Polystyrene is a combustible material, even if it is self-extinguishing. During a fire, it melts and emits toxic smoke. In this matter, Foam concrete wins uncompromisingly. And a few words should be said about durability. Foam concrete lasts as long as the building itself. It is not afraid of moisture, does not shrink, and is not destroyed over time, because its base is cement. Polystyrene retains its properties only under ideal conditions. If the roof's waterproofing is damaged and wet gets in, it can start to crumble. They can also be damaged by rodents. If we compare the above parameters, foam concrete wins in all key indicators. It is cheaper because it does not require an additional screed for sloping and another, reinforced, screed for protection. No adhesives are needed for joints. It is reliable, it does not burn, is not afraid of moisture, does not shrink, it is laid in a continuous layer, filling the voids. It is durable, it serves for decades without changes. It is easy to install, there are no extra layers and complex technical solutions. But polystyrene, although it looks simpler, actually has many disadvantages. Not only is its use more expensive and less reliable, 
but the issue of its fire safety negates the prospects for its use not only on a flat roof, but also in other parts of the building. Now let me tell you why foam concrete has been underestimated recently, and today it is becoming an increasingly popular material. The main problem with foam concrete is the quality of the foam. It is a key component for the formation of foam concrete. If the foam is unstable, the bubbles collapse and the material settles. And this is what created the myth of the unreliability of foam concrete. However, there is a solution. Our Liviton foaming agent creates a stable, finely dispersed foam that does not settle or delaminate. Thanks to this, the foam concrete remains strong, warm and durable. We have been producing our foaming agent in Ukraine and exporting it worldwide for over 10 years. Thanks to it, thousands of cubic meters of high-quality foam concrete were produced in Ukraine in 2024. But how exactly does our foaming agent work? Thanks to a special formula, it forms a stable foam that does not settle for several hours. This allows the cement mortar to harden without losing its structure. That is why our foaming agent is an ideal solution for the production of high-quality foam concrete. In addition, Liviton offers comprehensive solutions for manufacturers, consultations, equipment supplies, personnel training and support at all stages of production. We are confident that with the right approach to foam concrete production, this material can become one of the most popular in construction.